This is Red Dog Terrain. Welcome back to the shed. Today we're building Final Battle Diorama. I wanted to make a big Final Battle Diorama. I imagined a big dragon or a couple of hill giants standing over the party throwing down fire or boulders. I also wanted to make it a place for someone to be able to display their beautifully painted minis. I will admit, at first, this looks a lot like the cliff and hatch diorama that I made a while back. And it is. I guess I have a style. Or maybe I'm just not that creative. Or maybe I just like craggy cliffs. Anyways, by the end, it does look like a different piece. As I cut out XPS foam, let me talk to you about audio. My last video didn't have the best sound quality. A lot of times I'm recording early in the morning before work and while my partner is sleeping, so I tend to whisper, which doesn't lead to good audio, and I'm continuing to work on this aspect of my hobby. Please be patient with me. At this point, I've cut a 12 inch by 12 inch square and a broken rim of foam for the second layer. With the handheld hot wire cutter, I put a bit of an angle on it. The nice part is that you don't have to be precise. Cliffs and rocks are never straight lines. I cut a third layer and an extension out of scraps from the middle piece. I glue everything together and secure them all with toothpicks. I have a pile of scraps, big and small, that I save and try and use when I can. But eventually, I'm going to have to clean out the shed and the bucket of foam bits will have to go. Again, I cut an angle and then secure it with toothpicks and glue. I also pulled out my heat gun to make a depression in the middle. Then, I spackled the gaps and smoothed it all out with a wet finger. The chimera rested lazily on its perch. Its belly was full and its bloodlust satiated. The elf druid and his troublesome bow had caused him the most issues, but his bear companion had been so delicious. It had been decades since he had bear meat. There was just nothing like it. So tough, yet so sweet and juicy. He rolled on his back and balanced on his outstretched wings. The rest of the day would be spent sunning his lion belly. Oh, but what was that? The rhythmic clink clank of plate mail. One more tasty morsel wouldn't hurt. I coated the whole diorama in a mixture of cheap school glue, tile grout, fine sand, and coarse sand. This is a fun mess. I used a stir stick for most of it, but it eventually just got knuckle deep and used my finger. I noticed later, when I was painting the edge, that some of the mixture had spilled over, like right here. As I tried to remove it, some of the foam came off. Don't tell anyone. Next, I cut horizontal lines across the face and then diagonal lines. With a pair of tweezers, I raked across these lines. The foam came off in random chunks. It makes a great texture, lots of places for washes to settle, and high points to be dry brushed later. The spackle came off too, and that's fine. After that, I put on another coat of paint and sand and grout. However, this time I added a little water. I wanted the mixture to run into the cracks better, make sure it didn't leave any exposed foam. On a lot of other builds, I coat the foam in the secret sauce, but the towel grout makes a good protective coating. It doesn't need it. I glued down a few pebbles. But at this scale, they look like large rocks or boulders. Then I put down glue and spread it out. This was along the edges and corners and around the pebbles. Then I sprinkled on sand. It's a little difficult to see, but trust me, it's there. I 
I sprayed on isopropyl alcohol, which allows the watered down PVA glue to seep into the sand and really lock it in. Once, I went to the store and asked for isopropyl alcohol. The person working there said, sir, we don't sell icy purple alcohol. While I paint rocks to look like rocks and then dry brush them, let me tell you about the next cool thing Red Dog Terrain is doing. RDT is attending another con. We'll be at Creator Con in my hometown. Since it's so close, I'll be able to bring a lot more stuff, and this con will be significantly larger than the other. I will have pieces for sale, but mostly I'm just trying to meet people and let them know about my channel. So if you're in the area, please come by, take a picture, buy a thing, chat for a while, or just say hi. Also, we're making stickers. It'll just be the channel logo, but once they're done, if you're interested, let me know and I'll mail you one. I put on a black wash, as usual, but this was the bottom of the bottle. It came out super dark, way too dark. It looked like an oil spill. Before it dried, I sloshed on water from my paint cup and thinned it out. Then, with a paper towel, I dabbed off the excess. This improved it greatly. This is where we are at this point. It still needs some love. I use my Soil Work Oil Wash, not a sponsor, yet, to add some variation to the rocks and dirt. I didn't go too crazy. I was still trying to make it look different than the clip and hatch diorama. I also did a dry brush with light buttermilk. A friend of mine was making a pate from Critical Role for his Dragon Con costume. He had a pile of bird skeletons. I was happy to take them off his hand. And along with my collection of dinosaur bones and a few random skulls, I upped the danger level of this final battle diorama. After chopping up the skeletons, I gave them a coat of off-white spray paint. Once again, I used soil works, but this time I used their grease wash. These bones aren't greasy, but it works, so I kept going. I then glued the bones all around the diorama, and in some cases blatantly ignoring physics and how bones work. Next, I added a few tufts, but nothing super colorful. For the depression in the middle, I had some leftover Gorilla Glue epoxy. It was just enough to fill it, and then I added a few tufts around that. I painted the sides black, and now it's ready for a skeleton army, or an ancient dragon, or a unit of space marines. If you like what we're doing here at Red Dog Terrain, please like the video, subscribe, leave a comment, and please check us out at CreatorCon in Lafayette, Louisiana, link in the description.